Hello everyone, this is Darth Novi here. This time I'm going to review a book in a trilogy, and so the next few episodes will be focusing on the Han Solo Adventures, the first and the original Han Solo trilogy. Um, A.C. Crispin um, is not the first person to do a trilogy on Han Solo. Brian Daly did it first, and he did it when there was barely any material released for the EU at the time. Yes, there was comics, you know, that were coming out, and you had Splinter of Mind's Eye, but the novels of Star Wars was very scarce. Not that many books were released. There was only seven expanded universe novels that were released between 1978 up until I, sometime during the 80s. I can't, I, I, I'll correct myself in future episodes when I get to the Lando Calrissian adventures. So it was very scarce and very rare when we got a Star Wars novel before 1991. So Brian Daly introduced emulants that would be used later in the expanded universe, such as the Victory Class Star Destroyer, which this is the first instance where it's described in here. The Z-95 Headhunter, which is a famous ship that's used throughout a lot of the expanded universe. And this, considering that Han Solo, you know, all that Brian Daly had to go by was his characterization in A New Hope. He did a pretty good job having Han Solo in character. And that was was. Because, you know, most authors can't do that with a character when they barely have anything to work with. That takes talent, actually. You know, you feel like you're listening to Harrison Ford speak every time you read his lines. And the side characters that are introduced in this book, they're pretty good, too. Like Blue Max, Jessia. Um, that's how it looked like to me when I was reading it. All these characters that you, that you, that you read about in these books... At least the first one. They're pretty entertaining within themselves. This book, if you're looking for a Star Wars novel that's, you know, that's fun, that's more on the adventurous side, this is definitely a novel to pick up because, um, considering I'm reading Legacy: of The Force, where the, the, this is at the point where the expanded universe is, is getting darker, I wanted to, to venture back just for a bit and read something that's a little bit more fun. Not that I don't mind dark stories, but it's feels good once in a while to read something that isn't dark. And it is a fun little adventure, actually. At the time this was published, there was barely any Star Wars books. And some people may think, you know, a lot of these books wouldn't age well. That's not true. It's a really fucking good story. Um, it's not... Well, Splinter of Mind's Eye is, is garbage in my as far as I'm concerned. But this is great. I think it's a... Great novel, especially if you're a Han Solo fan like myself. And I wish I would have reviewed this sooner. So, how can you get a hold of these books? Though, I'm not going to sound condescending because some of you guys may be new and this may be your first episode watching this video. So, I'm going to assume that you are a new viewer. If you want to get these books... Don't track them down individually, especially at Star's End. If you want to read it at Star's End, buy this omnibus. This is what it currently looks like with the Legends banner. You, get, you can get all three of them for $8, and you can, along with this book, and you could read some really fun stories. Surprisingly, this fits really well with the, with the A.C. Crispin's Han Solo trilogy. Why and how? Well... At a certain point in Rebel Dawn, Han Solo and Chewbacca are at other parts of the galaxy. And you don't hear from them that much for a good chunk of the book. You hear stuff more from um, every, all the other characters. Well, in those chapters, this is where this trilogy takes place. So if you're reading in chronological order... You won't, you'll want to read this after you've read 
the second book of the Han Solo trilogy. So Han Solo having the Millennium Falcon in this is not a contradiction because he already wins the Millennium Falcon at the beginning of Rebel Dawn. I just find it amazing just how well it fits. It isn't like Splinter of Mind's Eye, which does contradict certain things that were established in, in future films. This fits perfectly in the expanded universe. And it, it, it's still in C canon. So this is why another reason why it's a good book. Even if it wasn't, I'd still recommend it because it's such a good story. Now, instead of watching this video, pick up this book. I give it a classic rating, the first out of the three books. Next time, I'll talk about Han Solo's Revenge, the second book in this trilogy. And I can't wait to read more. It was hard for me to put this one down. I can't imagine what Han Solo's Revenge is going to be like. May the Force be with you, and see you guys next time. Peace.